continuing with the trend of looking at older PCs and moving slowly backwards in time, here we have a gateway computer. It claims to have a Pentium 4, but does not say whether it's hyperthreading or not, so it might be an older Pentium 4 without hyperthreading. Designed, if I zoom in a bit like there, hopefully that's far enough in. Microsoft Windows 2000 or Windows ME, so substantially older than the previous computer that I looked at, the HP. There's no real obvious model number, model name featured on this. It has a floppy drive, a pair of USB ports on the front, along with a CD burner and a DVD-ROM drive. In terms of dust on surfaces, it's a lot better than the HP that I just looked at, but look at the size of that dust bunny sitting there. That is gross. However, the total amount of dust is less. This one looks slightly better taken care of, though it is older. And something to note is that the case is massive compared to the size of the motherboard. There's a lot of empty space in here, even with all of those drives and drive bays. Looks like it has three hard drive bays, the two optical disk drives, and the floppy disk drive, so this has a lot of room inside. That's a nice brick of a heatsink. Again, kind of out of end of past its expiration date in terms of thermal compound, and certainly dusty. If the camera can't maintain good focus on this, I'll just include a picture of it. But this is a Pentium 4 running at 1.5 gigahertz, I believe. 256k of cache, 400 megahertz bus, and 1.7 volts. And yeah, that this is a pretty early Pentium 4 because it's using the older style of socket. I don't know it off the top of my head, but at the bottom of the screen right about now, there should be some more information on the socket and the approximate age of this processor. Here is the newer of the two gateway computers, the one with the Pentium 4 in it. And before I try to fire this up, again, I don't have a hard drive, so it would only really be a power on self test. But before I do that, I want to call attention to a couple interesting components that I found in the PCI slots. First thing that caught my attention was a Sound Blaster Live sound card. I'm gonna see if I can get a good look at it. Lots of electrolytics on there. A big processing chip. Lots of op amps and of course lots of connectors for several speakers and a microphone. Something else interesting to note is that this motherboard contains no onboard graphics and thus relies on a graphics card in an expansion slot, though this isn't a PCI slot, I think. Oh shoot, again, it'll probably show up in the subtitle caption thing in a sec, because I'll have to look this up afterwards. So, instead of onboard graphics, this computer uses this graphics card. It has a S-Video, DVI, and a D-Sub VGA connector. The main 
GPU has this little pin fin heat sink. It's not much, but just all it needs. Copyright 2002 ATI Technologies up there. And originally, I couldn't tell what this was. There's no obvious marking of which model it is, but it does have this part number. Look that up, and this is an ATI Radeon 7000 with 64 megabytes of RAM, which I believe are these packages there and the four on the far side as well. Yeah, it says, yeah, all, all I found was it said Radeon graphics, but did not say which model it was. There it is, all plugged in, ready to go. I'm gonna turn on the mains. It's got a standby light on and I hear the whine of the standby circuit in the power supply. So that should be all set. Now, moment of truth, does this thing post? Contact. Zip. Nothing. Hold on, we appear to have technical difficulties. Paused the washing machine, made sure, double sure that all cables were properly connected and there were no shorts. I'm going to try this again. Mains on. Hear the power supply. I see a standby light. And let's see if this starts now. And we still got nothing. Alright. Hmm. Because I was unable to get it to start with the power supply it had, I decided to swap it out for this Hypro here, which I'm pretty sure still works. I only connected the motherboard and the CPU voltage regulator. I didn't connect any of the disk drives. And I'm going to see if this will get any response out of the machine. Mains on to the screen. Power supply on. Alright, that is working. And this looks a bit more manageable now. Before it was drawing almost 10 watts from the mains and sounded a bit strange. Now it's drawing 2.5 watts and looks a little bit healthier. I'm going to go ahead and hit the power button, see if this thing starts. Thing comes up. CD, DVD not found. Consult the troubleshooting manual. Escape. Hard drive not found. Duh. Let's see, do we get a BIOS screen? That might be all we get for this round. I think I'm going to... Nope. No operating system was found. Press the key on the keyboard to restart. Let's see, do we get any sort of setup menu. Does not look like we do. Uh, power cycle and stop the video here, see if I can get into any sort of BIOS setup menu. There we go. The delete key was what brought up the menu. And this is the overview of the system. Pentium 4, 1.5 gigahertz, 400 megahertz system bus speed, 256k of cache on the CPU, 256 megabytes of RAM, and two 128 meg modules. And the system time is, well, quite a bit off. It's 8.51, and that says 8.10, almost 8.11. Though the date is still correct, as in the 15th, so that is 
close enough. All right, so the issue with this machine was a failed or at least very unhappy power supply with a high pro power supply here. It is functioning fine. No, I don't have a hard drive or operating system for it. This is about as far as I can go for now. But this computer is, for the most part, functional. Thanks for watching.